In the previous video, I showed you how to make an auto jailbreak dongle for the PS4 using the ESP32-S2 Mini. Unfortunately, the PRB Lethal Exploit Host website has been suspended, so we can no longer cache the exploit host on the PS4 browser. In this video, I'll show you how to set up a self-hosted PRB Lethal Exploit Host, allowing you to cache it directly from your computer. I'll also demonstrate how to update the Gold Hen payload included in the self-hosted exploit, as it doesn't yet use the latest version of Gold Hen. Alright, without further ado, let's get started with the tutorial. Before we get started, I need to mention that if you haven't watched the previous video about jailbreaking with the ESP32 dongle, it's important to note that this method only works for PS4 systems running firmware version 9.00. It won't work on other versions. Alright, let's move on. First, we need to download the self-host PRB lethal exploit host files. If you try to download them from the original link, it won't work because the website hosting the files has also been suspended. Fortunately, I managed to download the files before the site went down, so I can share them with you. You can find the link in the description below. Next, extract the compressed self-host file. Inside the extracted folder, you'll find another compressed file containing the PS5 ESP32 version 3 binary file. This file needs to be flashed onto your ESP32. So now, we're going to flash this binary file onto the ESP32. If your ESP32 has already been flashed with this binary file, you can skip this step. First, we need to download a flashing application called Node MCU Pi Flasher. Here, I'm already on its GitHub page. Download the version that matches your computer's operating system. If you're using Windows, download this one. Note for Windows users. If the application doesn't run, you'll need to download another version from the top of the page and try again. I'm downloading the one at the top since the lower version didn't work on my computer. Now that both files are ready, we'll flash the binary file to the ESP32. To do this, First, connect the ESP32 to your computer using a USB Type-C cable. Activate flash mode on the ESP32 by pressing and holding the boot button. Then, while holding the boot button, press the reset button. To identify the buttons correctly, the reset button is labeled RST. Any other button is the boot button. So, press and hold the boot button first, then press reset while still holding boot. If done correctly, you'll hear a notification sound on your computer, indicating that flash mode has been successfully activated on the ESP32. Next, open the Node MCU Pi Flasher application. For the serial port option, check your device manager to find the correct port. Look under Ports, COM, and LPT for a USB serial device. Here, I can see that the USB serial device is on COM5, but it might be different on your computer. Select the correct port in the serial port field. In my case, I'll choose COM5. In the Node MCU firmware section, click Browse and select the binary file you downloaded earlier. Set the baud rate to 115,200. Set the flash mode to dual I.O. Under Erase Flash, select Yes. Wipe all data. Finally, click Flash Node MCU to start the flashing process. Wait until the process is complete. Once it's done, we're ready to move to the next step. Next, we'll download the latest version of the Gold Hen payload, which is version 2.B418.2 at the time of making this video. Here, I'm already on Sistro's Kofi page. The link is in the description. Let's go ahead and download it. You can enter a donation amount if you'd like to support them. I've already downloaded it, so let's extract the goldhen.bin file from the compressed file. After that, rename the file exactly like this. Make sure the file name matches perfectly, as we'll be referencing this exact file name in the script we'll add to the self-host files later. Next, 
copy or move the renamed Goldhen payload file into the files folder within the self-host directory. The next step is to edit a few scripts, so they point to the Goldhen payload file we just added. Still in the folder, we'll start by editing the menu.html file. To edit scripts, you can use Notepad or any script editor. Here, I'll just use Notepad. Right-click the file name, then select Open with Notepad. Now we'll add a new menu option for the latest version of Goldhen. First, add a new line. Then, copy the script line below it and paste it into the new line. Adjust the script version and menu description to match the new Goldhen payload. Make sure the script version matches exactly as I'm typing here. For the word latest in the old version, we'll remove it. Once everything is updated, don't forget to click save. Next, go up one level from the files folder. We're going to edit the index.html file. Here, we'll change the default gold hen setting to the latest version we copied earlier. Update the version name to match exactly as I'm typing here. Once done, save the file. Finally, we'll edit the menu.cache file. This step ensures that the gold hen file we just copied will be cached during the initial caching process on the PS4 browser. Add a new line anywhere in the file, then type the path and file name of the gold hen payload we copied earlier. Make sure you type it exactly as I'm typing here. Don't forget to save the file. All right, that's it. Now let's move on to the next step. Caching the exploit host on the PS4 browser directly from the self-host. Now, let's move over to the PS4. Before caching the exploit host, we need to clean up the PS4 browser first. Open the PS4 browser and delete everything, starting with bookmarks and history. Then, go to the settings menu and clear cookies and website data. Next, connect your PS4 to the same network as your computer. This means both the PS4 and the computer must be on the same local network. Once that's done, start the exploit host server on your computer. If a Windows security alert appears, select Allow Access. Then open the PS4 browser and enter the computer's IP address displayed on the exploit host server. Select Go to begin the caching process for the exploit host. You can also see the exploit host server log messages start running. Now, wait for the caching process to finish. All right, the exploit host caching process is complete, so we can now shut down the exploit host server. Next, restart your PS4. Now, let's activate the jailbreak and the gold hen payload. First, connect the ESP32 to the PS4 if it's not already connected. Then, connect the PS4 to the ESP32's Wi-Fi network. For those who don't know, the password is 1 through 8. Let me show you first that the game is still locked. Open the PS4 browser. Then, wait for the jailbreak process to complete. As you can see here, the Goldhen version message has been updated to the latest version we set up earlier. Now, let's activate Goldhen. And... It worked! Finally, don't forget to set the ESP32 sleep timer in the ESP settings menu and click Save. Now, let's try running the game. The game launches successfully. Alright, that's the tutorial on setting up the ESP32 S2 Mini as a jailbreak dongle for PS4 firmware 9.00 using a self-hosted exploit host. I've also shown you how to update the Goldhen payload, so if there's a new Goldhen update in the future, you'll be able to update it in the exploit host yourself. I'll end this video here. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section.
If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for stopping by the channel, and I'll see you again in the next video.